What's up guys, my name is Hexagon, also known as Surba, and today I'm gonna show you how to create a decent kick for maybe trap songs or something similar to that. Alright, so I'm gonna play you a little piece here, uh, to about 17 over here, and yeah, let, let, just play it. Alright, so uh, we're interested in the bass, nothing else. Don't care about the melody, uh, don't care about the hi, hi hat uh, or claps or whatever. We're interested in the kick today. Uh, just gonna add one there. Um, so we're just gonna copy my, uh, my already created pattern here. Uh, just gonna copy the notes um, and then put it in drum synth 2 and paste then obviously the one that you're gonna use in this case is the fruity drum synth live i'm not sure if this comes with every um fruity loops but I i'm guessing it is it's called fruity drum synth so i'm just guessing it is uh anyway it sounds a bit different um when you first play it up so we're gonna play the pattern here Yeah, that, that's not really trap-like. Um, so what we're gonna do is change it. Um, locate where you have put this. So in this case, this would be, um, it's glitching out here a little bit, so I'm gonna, there we go. Um, you can see it's on 808 kick over here. Um, so basically locate where that is, or you can just select it here. Um, this would be the 808 kick G4, um, which is right there. You have three major uh, dials that you need to change. Well, four if you want to get really special. You have the decay time, you have the harmonics, and you have the filter bass, the tone filter. Uh, you can change around with the velocity on both of these um, if you want to. Uh, I might do that now, so we'll we'll try it out. All right. So uh, the decay time is basically going to increase the time when the bass starts and stops. So uh, for now, it's basically a very short bass, as you can hear. But if we change this to about two thousand, um, you can see down in the left there. You can see it's at twenty one eighty at the moment, and if I do it now. very loud um, you could possibly just do this uh, change the volume a little bit and uh, do some mixing to make it not peak as much um, but we're gonna make it a little bit different uh, so we're gonna play the pattern and I'm gonna obviously turn on the volume a little bit to 60% then I'm gonna change the harmonics and uh, decay time maybe and the tone so let's uh, let's listen to it Uh, around 20% of uh, harmonic sounds good to me. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and change the tone now. Uh, 
that sounds good to me but we want to get more power out of this so um just remove all of these but you're gonna need those i'm just gonna show you so we re replace all of these already here because you start out with nothing so we're gonna start out with nothing as well um i use three things normally when i create my kick base uh we use the wave shaper we use an equalizer and we use base boost if you really want to do that we're not gonna go ahead and do that straight away so we start off with the wave shaper uh, i'm not 100 percent on what this does but i know how to get what i want out of it um, i think it's sort of like a compressor in ways uh, otherwise i'm thinking it's a simplified equalizer either of those makes sense to me uh, but we're gonna play it and then we're gonna change it to what we want to get out of the bass so i'm gonna change it around a little bit and you can hear the differences in the sound as we play them I think that's loud enough um, what I normally do after this is I, I sort of analyze what the uh, drum sounds like because uh, below for example uh, 320 Hertz you don't need anything unless you want a special click or something in your sound but I normally don't want that uh, there is a click there but that's sort of in this range 160 80 something like that so we're just going to analyze it right now. Uh, and as you can see, the click is right around here. Like, take a look at this area. It's quite obvious that the click is right there and we have the base right here. So below 320, just pull it down. You don't need that. Uh, you can actually just do this, pretty much. And we're gonna do, I think that's the one, yeah. And we'll do this. Okay, let's take a sound, uh, take a listen now and see what it sounds like. All right, that sounds good in my ears. Uh, just gonna flatten it out a little bit. And then straight down. All right. I like to uh, have the uh, 20 hertz area a little bit higher. So I'm gonna go that a little higher um, because all the punch is in the 40 to 80 range, as you can see here. But uh, when I do my uh, songs, if you want to even call it that, uh, I like to um, create a big reaction in whatever subwoofer you're using. And the subwoofer is normally in the range of uh, 80 hertz to 20 hertz or below that. You know, that's the sub bass area. Um, this bass with this pitch is going to be around 40 to 80. That's the range. Uh, obviously, if you change uh, down the pitch, it's going to move. Uh, backwards or to the left here at the 20 sign uh, if you pitch it up it's gonna move upwards so I normally want to keep my bass below 320 Hertz um, just you know that that's my type of bass that I use but obviously when you pitch it up it's gonna go high when you pitch it down it's gonna go low it's pretty simple um, so when we've done this you might want to add uh, a little bit of bass boost and as we previously so we know where the base is and where the base isn't 
So where you want, might want to create some more base is in the 30s or something like that, 30, 25 or something like that. So open the uh, base boost and you can change the frequency here. So we're going to change that to 25 uh, and then we're going to decrease it and then turn it up as we go along and see what it sounds like. So we're going to play it now and give it a go. That's that's a hefty bass. I like that sort of bass. Obviously, we can pitch it down and pitch it up, but I like this sort of bass um, mostly because my neighbors hate me for it, <laughs> and it's quite fun to get things, you know, sucked up in the subwoofer. It's pretty fun to see. Obviously, it's not good if they get stuck there. But anyway, this is the the sort of how to create a, a kick bass, and I think we've done that in a pretty okay time. Um, Obviously, this is just one base. There are lots of other bases that you can create. Um, for example, you can create a base out of pretty much anything here that has a, a bit of a tone to it. So you can create a base from that uh, and basically use uh, the high pitch of the tom uh, uh, alongside with the kick and sort of use that to pitch it up and down. Um, so, you know, there are different ways of doing it, but we're going to give it a listen. Um, in the song here and I'm gonna just place it out uh, until here so we don't waste so much time on that and uh, we're gonna see what it looks like one good thing to know is control B is basically just copy uh, the track and paste it on so all right let's give it a listen and see what the bass sound like obviously with the song So you have an idea what it sounds like. So what we're going to do now is basically um, do like this. So you can hear sort of the difference in the bass and we'll start around here this time. These are two different basses that I've done. I've done them slightly different, uh, changed the tone slightly different. So they might sound alike, but they have a lot of different stuff. For example, uh, the bass that I have uh, as pattern 4 here only has the wave shaper and the one that we just did has equalizer for uh, bass boost and wave shaper. So let's listen to it. Pattern 4 is a little bit more harsh and that's because we haven't really done an EQ that's the main part of creating a good bass is creating that EQ and obviously when you're doing the mastering I'm, I might get into that in another video but you gotta divide everything uh, I mean if you do a proper mastering you gotta do an EQ on every instrument you have um, so you can spread them up before uh, in the low the mids and the highs so you get a get a good sound space but we can take that in another episode if you guys want to uh this is just the kick episode if you will 
Um, so we're going to take a quick look again. So you can basically just copy my uh, what I've done here, um, sort of. Uh, and as I said, you know, uh, change the tone, uh, change the harmonics, uh, change the velocity of these, and you're going to get a sort of unique sound. And of course, you can change other stuff, uh, add more of a click, uh, and uh, add noise, whatever you want, you know, it. Uh, just play around a little with the noise, for example, uh, or uh, some other stuff here, add another wave, uh, you know, stuff like that. But play around a little with it, but this is just a sort of small guide on how to do it. Um, it was sort of long this episode, but, you know, whatever. We don't care about that. Uh, if you want tips on other stuff, like... Uh, uh, how to EQ other stuff as symbols or uh, snare or whatever. You just name it down in the comments and I will get on that as soon as possible. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Give it a like if you liked the video and I will see you guys in the next one.